a major off-season Bills news edition of Bills Take Two. I'm Jonathan Acosta, joined here by our WGRC NFL slash Bills insider Vic Carucci. And Vic, this was sort of a, a slow news day for the Bills, right? <laughs> Unbelievable, Jonathan. Yeah, it was like one thing after another. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the Bills roster for 2024 will look a lot different because of the decisions made today by Brandon Bean. Brandon Bean, definitely the hardest working NFL GM here on, on this Wednesday. Let's talk about some of those decisions that he made today, Vic. Starting with the players who won't be with the Bills next season. And it's really marking the, the end of an era. Guys like Jordan Poyer and Mitch Morse Part of the cuts confirmed today by the Bills. And before we get into sort of the nitty gritty and talk about what each specific decision means, in the bigger picture, these guys not being part of the team, what does that mean for the Bills going forward? This is a massive turnover of the roster to be done just in one day, to be done even over the course of multiple days or weeks before a season. Unbelievable in terms of all the things that they did get done. But when you're a desperate team, when you need to make as much cap room as the Bills need to get under the cap, just to get under it, uh, these are the significant transactions that take place. But make no mistake, a big chunk of this team, of the core of the Buffalo Bills as we knew it in the sense of them being a Super Bowl contender, is gone. And they are getting dramatically younger they're going to be different, and it will be an adjustment to really just watch this football team. It takes me back to the last time you saw something like this in this organization's history to when they said goodbye to future Hall of Famers Bruce Smith and Thurman Thomas and Andre Reid when it all came to an end for those iconic players. I am not saying that they said goodbye to any Hall of Famers in this particular instance, but they certainly, these players, Mitch Morris, Jordan Poyer, Tredavious White, they rank among the better players that this team has had in recent history, meant so much to all that this team had done to, to at least make itself a contender, not reaching the, the ultimate, not reaching the Super Bowl, but certainly giving them the credibility uh, that they hadn't had for a long time prior to the arrival of those players. And a lot of the moves today for the Bills coming in that secondary. Jordan Poyer gone. Micah Hyde, we don't know if he'll be back. The Bills restructured Russell Douglas's contract. They reportedly cut Tredavious White, as reported by ESPN's Adam Schefter. Just when you look at the totality of the moves made in that specific area for this team, how do the Bills kind of sort of carry over any sort of continuity into next season? How do you see the starters playing out in, in that area next year? They are bringing back... Uh, Taylor Rapp, he reportedly signed a three-year deal. So a lot of moves that were made in that back end of the defense. It felt all along as if the Bills' biggest changes would happen on defense as a whole. Just looking at that list of the pending free agents and then thinking about some of these older players, Micah Hyde being one who I do not expect to return uh, but you wondered about Tredavious White's health. I did not see the Jordan Poyer release coming at this point. I knew he was close to the end. I felt he had lost a step, as did Micah Hyde, maybe more than one step, and that something was going to give eventually, but I thought eventually for Poyer was after this 2024 season. To do that now has the feel of ripping off the Band-Aid, uh, knowing that they are going to soon be getting younger in the secondary, and let's just go ahead and do it. And that's what's happening here. As far as Tredavious White is concerned, it's, it's clearly an indication of concern that he wasn't going to come back and be the player he was at his very best. And when he was, he was one of the top corners in the game. But after two major injuries to his knee, to his Achilles, just thinking that he could be that guy who – uh, could could athletically do everything that made him when he was playing his best a top level corner uh, that doubt was there and and you heard it from Brandon Bean uh, speaking at the combine you heard Sean McDermott they were very non-committal about the the timeline and recovery for Tredavious White now again it's reported that this is what the plan is but it doesn't surprise me in the least if this is how they go 
with that. And in the meantime, it means they're going to be leaning on younger people. It, it means a, a Christian Benford has to uh, be what he has shown that he's capable of being. Um, it, it means a, 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 um, a Kyer Elam has to be what they thought he would be as a first round pick. Again, you're working on rookie contracts there and, and they have to deliver. Uh, but those rookie contracts, of course, are much cap friendlier and then making Rasul Douglas's restructuring cap friendlier. So collectively, it, it feels like they've moved in that direction. Then, of course, getting a deal done with Taylor Rapp, who was going to enter free agency. Not a surprise in light of the Poyer move. They made a value judgment that Taylor Rapp would be a more valuable player to them at the safety position. And remember, during the 2023 season, they had done some adjusting, putting uh, Poyer more in that slot coverage role while Rapp was doing some work at safety. And uh, maybe that was the handwriting on the wall. Yeah, you're right. It definitely felt as soon as Rapp signed in the offseason, it sort of felt like he was kind of a safety and waiting for if Hyde, Poyer, or both left that he, that he was, was maybe in line to assume one of those starting safety positions. As you look at the guys still left on the roster, do you feel comfortable with the pieces the Bills st still have in the secondary? Or does this maybe signal to you that they might be targeting the secondary in one of the early rounds in April's draft? It's going to be very interesting to see how they approach things from a draft standpoint. I, I always, with the secondary, I always thought that cornerback would be a big part of their thinking because this is considered to be a particularly deep draft at the corner position. Now, a lot of discussion that the Bills would use their first pick uh, on a wide receiver, uh, picking 28 and, and assuming they stay there. Of course, they could always move up uh, or down. But in terms of this draft's depth, receiver, corner are the two positions and it felt to me, or has felt to me, like those will be the spots that they would hit with their first two picks. I don't know that this even changes that, but it does, it does feel like corner and defensive back has to be a higher priority. And keep in mind, Sean McDermott, defensive-minded coach, a background in the secondary, uh, his approach to building this team started with the free agent signings of two safeties, Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer, way back in 2017, building from the back forward. And then, you know, looking at what they have done from a coaching standpoint, Bobby Babich being named the new defensive coordinator after Sean McDermott wore that hat this past season. And what's Babich's background? It's heavily in the secondary. And even though he coached linebackers uh, this past season, but he's – uh, he's got that expertise, and you just, you just get the feeling that that is where this team wants to, A, increase its speed, uh, and B, uh, increase the, you know, just the instinctive play that, uh, that you know Sean McDermott believes is so important to the foundation of the defense. Looking at the other side of the ball, I don't think anyone can argue that one of the strengths of this Bills team in 2023 was the offensive line. So much continuity on that group. Cyrus Torrance comes in as a rookie and impresses, and that old line plays every single game together. Again, the continuity. Well, that's changing with Mitch Morse gone now, who is still playing at a high level. The team traded Ryan Bates just a couple of days ago. What does this signal about the Bills' future along the offensive line? This was the biggest surprise to me, and I, in many ways, you knew that a reset of this team was coming along because when you're built to be a Super Bowl team and, and to go for it all, as they've been in multiple seasons these past few years, and then you don't get there, you, there's only so much time in that window. But Mitch Morris was such a foundational piece to all of that, and I thought they would likely stick with him. And, and I don't know anyone who could have expected that he would be among the people they would let go now. But it goes back to the desperation of needing big chunks of money off their cap, number one. And number two, I mean, to, to decide that a player who is, I think, playing at the top of his game as part of the strength of the team 
where there was great continuity, where everybody stayed healthy. He's the glue, or was the glue, to that unit, and one of the foremost leaders on the entire roster. To move on from him, I think is very risky, because number one, it could compromise the line if you just stop there and say, okay, Connor McGovern stepping in at center, uh, how much of, of a, does he give you the same of what you had? Is he an improvement? Maybe, but I'm not sitting here saying that they automatically upgrade themselves going from Mitch Morse to Connor McGovern, and they could be taking a backward step with that line, considering how much Morse meant to the whole group. Yes, Aaron Cromer, as an offensive line coach, does a great job. Um, there will be more pressure on him to, to keep it together and, and to have this unit function as really seamlessly in many ways as it did this past season. And then the second thing, and maybe this should be the first thing, is the locker room leadership. Uh, you can't minimize that. This whole culture that this team, every, every team talks about, but this team in particular has prided itself on building. Mitch Morris was a crucial part of that. He carried on the approach that Sean McDermott wants his players to take. He carried that into the locker room. He was as bought into that as anybody, and I think had, had a great feel for how McDermott is, is leading the team and translating a lot of that to younger players. So uh, I'm really you know, interested, and, and frankly, I think to a great degree, Bills fans should be concerned uh, that they've taken this step to move away from Mitch Morris. And you talked about it, a lot of these moves today made with the idea of creating that cap space that they have to make. Well, one of those moves back on the defensive line, Von Miller restructuring his contract according to NFL Network's Ian Rappaport. He was scheduled to make just over $17 million in base salary. That's going down to $8.5 million. That's a big change there with Von Miller. What more can you tell us about sort of the dynamics that go into play with Von and the Bills coming to the table and kind of agreeing to this restructuring of his deal? This is a remarkable transaction because it seemed as if the Bills were just stuck with a contract with Von Miller uh, at least for another year before they could get any breathing room to move on from him. And the, the talk that you heard at the Combine, and now I think we know why, was, well, Von Miller by the end of the 2023 20, season or into the postseason was looking more like himself coming back from that knee injury. And yeah, we saw some flashes where he looked better, but I, I'm not convinced at 34, uh, you know, he, he is certainly becoming a, a much older player in NFL player years. And then the, the health aspect that that knee has been injured twice. How, how well is that going to continue to hold up as he gets older, number one? Um, but the fact that he was willing to take a straight up pay cut to give this team significant cap relief makes him right now arguably the MVP of the Bills offseason. I, I, I don't think they could get to where they are now, which appears to be, uh, and, and this is a lot of math, uh, and a lot of people have been kind of going over and pouring over these numbers, but it appears to be that they're under the cap, which is a place they needed to be by uh, March 13th, so, so basically a week's time. And they still would need to have you know, the room to sign draft picks and, and all of that. So I, I'm, I'm thinking there's, there's more work still to be done. But the biggest, heaviest lifting of it, of course, occurred in one day. And for Miller to agree to this, where you know, could he have just told this team, look, I, I'm going to stay right where I am. You're the one with the problem. But given the fact that he was such uh, an underperforming player, in the 23 season and that this team had committed more than uh, 51 million dollars of guaranteed money when they signed him as a veteran guy when there was some risk with that because of his age because of his injury history give von miller some credit to say you did take the chance on me and you did give me a lot of this guaranteed money this is my payback to you uh, th this is my goodwill gesture to you Again, in a year where you did not see this guy, first of all, you, you saw reduced numbers of, of snaps, and you just didn't see him performing anywhere close 
to what he had prior to suffering uh, the knee injury that he did 11 games into the 2022 season. Now, it wasn't a day of just exits for the Bills. They do reportedly bring in one player, according to Tim Graham of The Athletic and Mike Garofolo of NFL Network, Mitch Trubisky coming back to Buffalo as a Bills backup quarterback. Kyle Allen had that role last year, but it never felt like a guarantee that he would occupy the same position for the Bills next year. What do you make of Trubisky coming back to Buffalo and the Bills kind of getting this done so early on in the offseason? I think the Bills were absolutely concerned that moving on from Kyle Allen, you know, what were they going to do for a security blanket, for an insurance policy on the, the hope, number one, is that you don't have to have anybody but Josh Allen take a meaningful snap for the team. But, you know, football being the game that it is, the 100% injury game that it is, and knowing that the percentages would suggest or the odds or the, the analytics would suggest that, you know, you might have to go through a, a, a four games, perhaps, without your starting quarterback. So who's it going to be? And there was some discussion. Do they, do they draft a QB this year? Maybe like in the fifth round or something, some low round pick. But if you do that, that guy better be able to play and win a couple of games for you in that stretch. Win them all, if possible, without Josh Allen in there. But, uh, you, you know, can you really say as an organization, and this was where you, you sort of heard from uh, Brandon Bean some doubt when he spoke about this at the Combine. So Trubisky becoming available after his departure from the Steelers and coming, being able to come back to Buffalo – uh, I think fits in, in multiple ways because he's got that experience. He, as, he has a, a really good rapport with Josh Allen. They, they had a good room with him in there. He knows his place on this team, even though he was once regarded as a guy who would be a franchise quarterback when he was drafted by the Bears. He's, he knows he's not that guy. And this is another opportunity to play, to get paid, uh, and, and he and – the Bills certainly hope pay him not to play, but um, the other part of it is, a, is an understanding of what the Bills' foundational offense is, even though it's a different offensive coordinator in Joe Brady, but you know he has that familiarity with him as opposed to Ken Dorsey, who was the OC uh, when Trubisky was, was aboard. So I think when, when you break it down... Um, or, or, I mean, I'm sorry, going back to, uh, to uh, Brian Dayball beforehand, excuse me, but just in terms of when you break it down, there's familiarity with the, the Bills organization, with Josh, with how the offense is basically going to function, in, you know, no dramatic turns. And that's what your backup guy at quarterback has to do. He has to have that kind of command to step in on a moment's notice. Well, busy, certainly a, well, Vic, certainly a busy day, a memorable day for Buffalo sports fans. It started with Casey Middlestat being traded by the Sabres. It ends with Mitch Trubisky reportedly coming back to <laughs> yeah. Buffalo. And then plenty of Bills moves in between. Certainly a day that's going to be talked about for a long time. All of it part of the Bills trying to get more cap compliant, get under that cap as free agency quickly approaches. And we're going to be talking about probably a few more Bills moves coming up in the upcoming days. And we'll be sure to have you tuned in right here on our WGRC YouTube page as we talk with Vic about everything that the Bills do this offseason and as we look forward to the draft also coming up next month. But for now, Vic, thank you so much for joining us.